Hey y'all, Natalie here today, and it's time for the Dust Bunny series with my friend Kira. I am using this fun paper stack from Die Cuts with a View. It's called No Problema. So just watch me flip through here and pick which um, papers I'm gonna use. In this series, Kira and I like to dust off an old paper collection that we haven't used in a while and use it to inspire our page. Um, we actually kind of have a similar color scheme going on today. I think she has some purple in her page, so that's kind of fun. But um, I had these photos of the Ultimate Taco Tuesday that I wanted to stick in my album. And so I chose this No Problema because of course it has like a South American theme. Um, well, even though I guess Mexico is not in South America, is it? You would think I would know these things, but <laughs> you know what I mean here. Um, very fiesta-like, right? So um, my idea is to cut my papers in like a two by three um, size and line them up. I'll rough up the edges, you know, of course I like a lot of dimension and texture, but just give two lines um, of the papers with one photo on each line and I want to put a big title in between it and so the title is going to be Ultimate Taco Tuesday. These photos are from Cinco de Mayo from last year. Um, we had our little like pod that we quarantined with and we just had a little some tacos on the deck and it was fabulous and don't worry I give my kids a speech every year about the Battle of Puebla and what Cinco de Mayo really means. I was a Spanish major in college and I had to do a whole report in Spanish on Cinco de Mayo and why we celebrated or why people in Mexico celebrated and we've kind of adopted it. But it's interesting and I'm going to use this on the background. It is the new tie-dye stamp from Alta New and I love that it has this little guide and it shows you how to layer things up. Um, I'm going to use the long linear um, tie-dye stamps here. And I chose these three ink colors because those are the colors of the papers. Another little like out there, maybe not a combination you would typically choose, but my idea is that I've, I've stamped them on this gessoed background. So I'm gonna do the watercolor technique, as Missy would say, looking like it, it's left out in the rain. That's the look I'm going for here. So I do the larger tie-dye stripe in, in purple, and then I do one in red and one in turquoise um, on the smaller stripe because it's all like one, piece of tie-dye it's it's like two rows and they're meant to like kind of offset and stagger with the other stamps in the set so I do a section up at the top to go under those um, papers and the photos and then a section at the bottom and I'm going at it you know here I've got my my stamping and I've got my watercolor and I'm just really enjoying it really enjoying the process I love blurring all of it out I am leaving some of it intact and in the full image but this is exactly the look I'm just going for and well I'll no spoiler alert for a minute or two later down the road but I go to put back all of my papers and my photos and you can't see any of it and it is the nature of mixed media that a lot of times what you do is covered up some um, and just peeking out but I'm telling you like once I put those papers and photos back on you can't see any of the stamping it was very disheartening and I try to um, alter my papers and make them smaller a little bit so that you can see it, but it just doesn't work out. So I do end up going back and adding additional stamping and doing this process all over again. Right now I'm adding some splatter. I um, just put my ink pad down on my glass mat, watered it down and used it to splatter. Don't wanna splatter too much red just because it tends to look a little bloody. I mean, I like true crime and all, but I don't really want blood splatter all over my layouts but that ends up being like the only part you can see once I put the photos back on so you'll see that here in a minute I won't make you watch me do all of that all over again but um so here are the photos and I like um how we have that like random kind of cream color in there but it just kind of makes a nice balance and if you put them in the correct spots on each row so I'm like trying to make the stamping peek out, but if I do that, then there's no room for the title, which is totally the idea that I had envisioned with putting the giant title between the two rows. 
So I cut down my paper and I start roughing up the edges and I think maybe if I make it smaller, nope, still doesn't work. So I decide I'm just gonna accept it and add more stamping. So there's the additional stamping I added. I didn't make you watch that. Now you just see me blur some more out, make it a watercolor. And this part is fun and I do this a lot. When I'm shopping for stamps, um, I tend to look for patterns like this. Um, that I can repeat a lot on a background and then blur out. So like lines, um, dots. I have like um, a Catherine Puller fireworks stamp, which I actually haven't used yet. I, I don't know why, but it's gonna be super cool to do this technique with that. I'm super excited. I need to make a layout with that. So I've let it dry now and it's, and it's looking good. It's exactly what I need. So I've um, cut down all of the papers to size I did initially I wanted them to be two by three like the photos but it's okay that I cut them down and I'm just making them really textured either even ripped a little bit that's okay that's kind of the look I'm going for here it's a really like rustic faded hard look I didn't cut down that one like um, cream paper up at the top just because I kind of it kind of mats the photo so I used the same turquoise paper from the collection to cut the word ultimate with my favorite skinny momento dye. And then I found this orangey red studio calico, I think it is, um, alpha to do taco Tuesday. So off screen, I used a turquoise thread to do a zigzag stitch through the middle of both lines of paper. And then I just go back on the top and pop up on foam, the yeah, yeah, yeah sentiment and both photos because I didn't want to sew through those. Um, so just to make them stand out a little more, I popped them up with that foam tape roll there. That's from Spiegel Mom Scraps. And um, yeah, there you have it. That's my boy sombreros. Um, we visit Mexico a lot, or we did in the past. I love Mexico. I have lots of good friends down there. So um, actually, well, I was pregnant. The luck. Well, no, Heath has been. Heath has been once, but um, Lachlan hasn't been yet. Hopefully soon. So um, I figure out the middle letter in my title is the M. So I add the M and then I glue everything down from there. And then um, for the Taco Tuesday word, I didn't have all the letters I needed. I didn't have two A's. I had an A and an at sign, but I needed two A's. So I decided to use upside down B's. I also used a three backwards for the E, but since there was only one E, you never know, right? Like it, it looks like an E, at least to me, it works. <laughs> um, so there's the upside down A. I also didn't have a Y, so I took an X and I just sliced off the little bottom right part of the X and it became a little Y and I'm happy with how that looks. So I stuck all those down. And then I decided, oh wait, I have food stamps. <laughs> Again, I did this uh, in a video I think last week. I got these new food stamps from Citrus Twist Kits and there's just so many fun sentiments and everything and so they definitely have a um, taco. So I, def I just decided, you know, I need some taco stamps, right? So actually Kira used to be on the Citrus Twist design team and so before I bought this, I'm like, are they good stamps? Cause like, I'm kind of a stamp, stamp, stamp snob. Like if they're not gonna give me that perfect imprint, like if they look like, even if you season them, you know, and they, and they still like kind of bubble up, I'm not into that. And she was like, oh yes, Trina like does everything perfectly. Everything looks so good. So I love them. They are fabulous. She recommended me properly because they are great. So I used the yes to stamp to try to alter my title to say yes to ultimate taco Tuesday. Then I put tacos on a couple of the little medallions. One of those medallions is from a separate stamp set. And stamp the tacos in red to kind of go bring out the red in there. And so then I um, cut them out with some different circles and label dies in my um, Sizzix die cut collection. And now I'm going to embellish. So I have these really old Mexico um, rub-ons. So they still work, they are fabulous. So there was a sombrero. So I put that there above the photo of the hats. And then there was a little um, margarita. So I stuck that down there. And then I have this little tiny sheet of taco stickers. And you know, they're kind of cheesy little like maybe more so for like a planner. They've got little faces on them. But you know what, I'm like, what? They go so well with the page. And so I basically put on any Amy Tangerine purple stickers that I had that actually, that went with the um, collection. 
Amy's one of the only purple loving people from that makes American crafts and purple. Um, so I just, and now I'm sprinkling those stickers from that sticker sheet of the tacos around. There's also avocados and hot sauce. I love hot sauce. So um, they work, you know, they might be a little um, outside of my typical style, but it helps embellish the page and I'm happy with it. So make sure you go check out Kira's video and see what collection she dusted off to use today. I'm so glad she does this series with me. It's super fun. And I thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I've really been working on growing my channel lately and I just hit over 600 subscribers and I'm so excited for every person that subscribes and I love comments and I love to respond to them and I'm really grateful for all of it. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.